Joining me now is the legal commentator, Joshua Rosenberg. Uh, good evening, Joshua. Hello, Thanks Mark. for being with us. So, 10am tomorrow, Old Bailey. History will be made. Tell us um, what's going to happen and the background to this. Well, what's going to happen tomorrow is that a young man called Ben Oliver, who's 25, is going to be sentenced for the manslaughter of his 74-year-old grandfather, David Oliver, uh, last year. A terrible case. Uh, the uh, defendant was cleared of murder by a jury, but admitted manslaughter due to diminished responsibility. So quite an interesting challenge for the judge. Uh, judge Munro will hear uh, arguments um, from the prosecution and the defence, which you won't be able to broadcast tomorrow morning, because all you'll see is the judge uh, delivering her reasons for sentencing uh, this young man, assuming that she agrees to allow the proceedings to be televised, which we're all assuming she will. And what she will do is she will explain a little bit of the background to the crime. Uh, she will explain the arguments that were put on behalf of this defendant, Ben Oliver. She will explain how sentencing works, how guidelines apply, uh, mitigating and aggravating factors. And then she will tell Ben Oliver what the sentence is that he must serve for manslaughter. Uh, and when she finishes doing that, that will be the end of the broadcast. Uh, and that is all we will see. We won't see the defendant. We we won't see the lawyers, we won't see uh, the victim's family, uh, we won't see anybody but the judge. Right, so it's limited to the sentencing remarks by the judge. Why not um, more of the trial? If the public can go into court for a trial, why, why not the, the cameras covering all of it? I think the judges have been very concerned about this arrangement. I mean, you're looking at pictures of the old Bailey and all you'll see tomorrow um, is the judge. Uh, there is concern uh, that there might be a reaction in court by the family, there might be a uh, disturbance in court, uh, it might be uh, difficult for uh, the family, the victims, uh, even for the lawyers to begin with, uh, to have these very sensitive issues uh, broadcast. Now, it's perfectly true that appeals in England and Wales are broadcast already, and the lawyers have got very used to that. But you don't usually see witnesses in those cases, uh, and uh, all you hear from are the lawyers um, and the judge. Uh, and so I suppose this is being done gradually, but I, I think it's fair to say the broadcasters hope that if this is a success, it will be extended to a greater part of the trial proceedings. Yeah, because, of course, some countries, I suppose most famously the US, do uh, go much further, don't they? They do, and uh, uh, some of us remember the trial of a man called O.J. Simpson, which was seen as a, a bit of a media circus uh, because that was broadcast live, and uh, it was thought that everybody, the police, the lawyers, even the judge, were playing to the cameras, uh, and people are very concerned that we shouldn't see anything like that in uh, England and Wales. It's fair to say that criminal trials in Scotland can be broadcast because the restrictions passed on cameras in court, obviously these were still cameras in, in those days, passed in the 1920s, almost 100 years ago, uh, were never applied in Scotland. Uh, but in Scotland, you need the consent of everybody concerned. The distinctive thing about what's happening in England and Wales is you won't need the consent of the defendant for the case to be uh, broadcast. You won't need the consent of anybody but the judge, who can, of course, in his or her discretion, decide that this is not a case that's suitable for broadcast. Right, and I'm interested, you said... Um, or I think you said a little bit earlier that you thought one day more of the trial may be broadcast. Um, I suppose that depends on how this stage of, of uh, this goes. Very much so. What those behind the broadcasting, and this includes the judges and the Ministry of Justice, uh, think, is that if we see judges doing their job on camera we will respect the very difficult task a judge has in passing sentence, in assessing the guidelines, in assessing how this case, case fits within the guidelines, uh, whether you reduce the sentence for some reason, whether you increase it for some reason, or whatever. 
Uh, we can, of course, uh, see uh, these uh, remarks by going to court. Nobody has the time to do that. But they're also often published in writing. But people don't take the trouble to read uh, them. I think when people do understand what sentencing involves, I think they will uh, respect the judges. Obviously, uh, families uh, uh, in a murder case, manslaughter case, or any case where somebody's been injured often say that the sentence is too low and it can be increased by the Court of Appeal. But the thinking is the more we see how serious the courts take this sentencing exercise, the more respect the public will have for it. Right, and just uh, 20 seconds left. It'd be on a time delay, though, will it? There'll be some sort of... Uh, delay built a, a, in. A small, a small time delay, pretty much as live, only about a minute's delay, um, but uh, the judge will have a big red button uh, and so will the broadcasters. If anything happens, if there's an interruption, for example, uh, then the, the feed will be cut and the broadcast will be ended. OK, uh, Joshua... Good to have you on. Thank you very much for explaining what is going to happen tomorrow. Thanks very much.